I've got a call on at the moment from someone who claims that he is a retired uh, cyber thief, internet thief, if you like, and therefore doesn't want to give a name. And I don't normally take calls out names, but on this occasion we'll take a chance and see just um, what money we get from it. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Dickin. Uh, you're a wise man taking the call. I believe the caller before me sounded very much like one of my accomplices from many years ago. What are you going to tell us? I'm going to talk to you about minimising the risk. Yeah. I set up a business several years ago to be the Robin Hood of the 21st century. If I ask you, I know you're not going to disclose on air tonight, if I ask you what your P60 earnings were last year, you would round it off to the nearest thousand. And let's assume your earnings last year was £50,632. Mm -hmm. My concern is £632. If I can take that from your bank account or credit cards or any other internet access device that you may have, then other people aren't going to come and break into your house. Which why means, is that? Which means... Well, well, why, why is nobody going to break into my house? Well, because clever people can take your earnings without you noticing because you spend time locking your house up. You don't. You don't do your personal risk analysis. No, no, I see. You're, so you're saying you won't, you won't make a link between the two. No. Well, why, if you're going to take 632 quid, don't you take your ass? No, because if I ask somebody how much they earn, they don't know. But I know they earn that little bit extra. So I'm thinking, well, if someone tells me they're earning 50,000 a year and they're actually earning six fifty. 50,632, mm. I can take 632 pounds and we're all happy. No, no, but, uh, but why, why would you do that? How would you do that? Um, because I've got a very lucrative lifestyle. No, no, how and would you do that? Well, it's quite, it's quite simple. For example, if I wanted the key to the door, and, and, and this is a paraphrase, I'm not going to break into your house and I haven't got a key to your door, but if I wanted the key to your finances, the first thing I need is your national insurance number. Mm -hmm. And I can get that very easily by using accomplices to ring round all the medical centres in your area within a 50 mile radius uh, and doing some sort of <sighs> check on whether you are registered with them. I would then build up a report with a practice manager uh, to say that you've got some sort of private medical claim from there. I've got your national insurance number and all the sorts of details. Once I involve a private medical claim, we can then, or we could then, uh, refer that to an insurance company, because once we've got your national insurance company, we will know whether you're contracted into the state pension or out of the state pension. Mm -hmm. If you're contracted out, that means some of your national insurance companies go to an insurance company. We then lodge a complaint to say that you were misadvised. And you do all that, hmm. um, involve all those accomplices, all those phone calls, for 632 quid. You're sad. This is Talk Sport. I don't know if you heard our last caller, if you did, how you'd have formed your opinion of him. Was he uh, an ex con man? Was he currently still operating as a con man? Or did the words Walter Mitty come to mind? Oh, it's seven o.